They are being watched by a pack of carnivorous Utahraptors. For the moment, they are biding their time. Hey guys, some stupid sketch show guy here with another prehistoric figure review. And today's prehistoric figure review has been very long awaited and was originally going to be my 20th figure review celebration, but it got pushed back because I got a Camp Cretaceous Troodon and I really wanted to review that first. But finally, here it is the review of the Toyway Walking with Dinosaurs Utah Raptor. So let's get into it. The paint job here is probably the best part of this figure, as it is almost perfect in imitating the Walking with Dinosaurs Utah Raptor from the show. It replicates almost everything correctly, all the stripes, the yellow base coat, the whiter underbelly, the darker colored hands, although I don't think they were gray, but that's besides the point. Almost everything about this figure is well, screen accurate, and that's the greatest strength of this figure, being a near-perfect replication of the dinosaur from the show, which is something that other Walking with Dinosaurs Toyway figures can't really claim to possess. For example, we have the Toyway Stegosaurus, a figure that I reviewed previously on my channel. Compared to the actual Stegosaurus from the show, this figure is by far the least screen accurate, although it is definitely one of the figures that I am happy isn't screen accurate, but you get to learn more about that if you actually watch the review. You can check that in the playlist for prehistoric figure reviews. Same for the Postasuchus, which, while is more screen accurate than the Stegosaurus, is not fully screen accurate, as it does change the shades of the colors a bit more. As in the show, it was more brownish, however here, it's gray and red. But it still is decently screen accurate, but far from perfect. But this is in its whole nother league. And because of that, I have to give the paint job a 9.5 out of 10. But the rest of this figure doesn't really hold a candle to the absolutely amazing paint job. For example, the pose. As you can see, the figure is rested on its tail and the balls of its feet. And when you actually try and support it on the actual toes, well, you get that. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. It's simply too out of proportion for it to support its weight on its toes, and instead it has to rest on, well, these. And that is a bit annoying, to be honest, but it isn't the worst looking of the, this sort of pose. If you look at the Hasbro Young Rex, that poseability was definitely worse. It definitely had a worse case of balls of fetitis, but this still isn't great either. So for that, I will give the pose of this figure a 5 out of 10. Next up is scientific accuracy, which is definitely the weakest part of this figure, as the figure sacrifices scientific accuracy for screen accuracy, which I say is a fair trade, but if we're gonna have to rate this figure on just scientific accuracy, it's not pretty. First off, the proportions of this figure are very much off to what Utah Raptor is known to be now. This figure is very, very skinny, and also has an incredibly long tail, a ridiculously long tail that it obviously wouldn't have in real life. In real life, Utah Raptor was actually one of the bulkiest and stockiest of the raptors, so this skinny body is the complete opposite of what it is in real life. As well as that, if you take a look at the face, it's a bit too pointy and shrink-wrapped to be a Utah Raptor skull, as modern Utah Raptors have a bit of a rounded tip to their skull, rather than this pointed triangular look. And the most glaring issue is obviously the fact that it does not possess any sort of integument whatsoever. Even if Utah Raptor doesn't have any direct evidence of feathers, it's you can make some conductive reasoning with all the other evidence of feathers on other dinosaurs like Utah Raptor that Utah Raptor had feathers. One of the few things though that it does get right here is the hands. The hands are actually not pronated as they would in most other figures of this time. They're actually held pretty close to real life, which I'd say is a pleasant surprise, and saves it from getting the absolute worst rating I could have given it. So because of that, I will give this figure a courteous 4.5 out of 10. 
when it comes to accuracy. And lastly, we have the detail. The detail starts off strong when you look at the face, because you actually get some nice solid scaling on the face, so you can kind of see some pretty nice details here, as well as some nice shine around the eye. That's a pretty nice detail, however when you move past it, it just kind of gets a little less good as it progresses. Of course you get all these nice little flaps of skin for the neck, but after that, it's just a lot of just weird paint detail once you get past the neck. There's a lot of just weird brushing that kind of counts as detail. Besides that, most of the detail on here doesn't have anything really to do with scales. A lot of it is just bumps in the skin. You know, th this definitely is far from the best detail I've ever seen. It isn't like individually sculpted scales and stuff. It's just a lot of lines and creases and stuff. So it's definitely not far from being exempt from detail, but it also doesn't possess as much detail as a modern figure would. The only other place that really has as much detail here is when you look down at the legs, because you can see all the little ridges in the toes, which is pretty cool, but the rest of the figure doesn't keep up this sort of consistency, so you just get stuff like this, which is okay at best. So, if I had to summarize the detail, it has a few parts where it's actually pretty good, but the rest of it is just kind of plain mediocre. So the best I can give it is a 6 out of 10. So now time for my final thoughts. Although the detail, scientific accuracy, and pose fall short of modern figure standards and are generally mediocre, the paint job is what saves this figure from being a bad figure, as the paint job is absolutely amazing and carries it way further than it could have anywhere else. So, for my final rating, I give the Toyway Walking with Dinosaurs Utah Raptor a 6 and a quarter out of 10. And while that does seem a bit harsh, this figure definitely is still going to be on my favorite shelf. For the paint job alone, and its sheer rarity, this figure is good, even if critically it falls a little off. Hope you guys enjoyed this prehistoric figure review, comment down other figures I should review, and see you guys next time. Hmm, who did I find it most difficult to work with? Animators. Definitely animators. You know, chase this dinosaur, chase that dinosaur. You'd swear we couldn't act. It's so degrading.